I was sitting in the waiting area. This was the fifth expert that I'd gone to now in a row. The ones before that, I'd gone to doctors, osteopaths, physios, chiropractors, you name it. Now I was at the fifth expert and this was an esteemed physio. And obviously I won't be naming names, but lectured in a university and was involved in an Irish national team. So like my mindset there, this is five years ago now, or even more than that, five, six years ago, when I was 24, 25, I'm 30 now. I still remember the mindset. Like it's the mindset that a lot of us will have in those situations where we're looking for the fix. You know, we've lost our physical freedom, can't do things we want to do anymore, and we're going to people now trying to sort this out. I still remember like having hope. You know, I've been to four other experts before that didn't work out very well. They just basically gave me a lot of diagnosis of what was wrong with my body and gave me the fixes, the interventions, did them, but didn't work for me, you know, and it was never a case of not being consistent. Like I was very driven, very consistent, um, but the stuff that I was doing just wasn't working for me, which makes it even more frustrating. Um, so now I was at the fifth one and I'm thinking, you know, because it's an esteemed physio, seems to be good that this is it. You know, she's going to be the one to fix me now. She's going to be the one to get me out of it. And like, I still remember going in, doing the usual hip table tests, which were horrible for me. Um, I, I would have a high pain threshold. I'd be very stubborn and tough on these things. But like, I still remember when I go in there, even she could see the pain, you know, the pain was eight, nine, 10 out of 10, like Jesus Christ, um, trying to get me into some of those positions. And we'd have to take breaks and, and different things. But look, long story short, did the kind of initial assessment that we'd usually do. And this is after three or four months um, working with this person, just like the other ones are even longer. And at the end, when I'm expecting now that there's going to be some sort of good news, the news at the end of it is that, sorry, Mark, you have scoliosis of your spine. This is why you have the chronic back pain going on for 10 years. This is why you have the hip issues, you know, the chronic hip pain as well. This is why you have the left knee issue and the neck issues. It's all coming from scoliosis of your spine, which if you don't know, means abnormal curvature of the spine. So mine was curving a bit to the left. And she's saying that's why most of the issues are more down the left side. Like it was my left knee, my left hip more so than the right hip. And this was her diagnosis of, of what was wrong with me and why I had those chronic pains. So that was it. You have scoliosis. It's nothing, nothing we can do. You know, if I found you at 15, not at 25, we'd be able to work on this, but you're a fully grown man now. And, you know, we can't do anything about that. So you're just going to have to manage things take up swimming, you know, swimming will help you keep the mobility that you have now and not let things get worse, but you're not really going to be able to do those things that you were doing before. It's time to sell. So if you're following me on Instagram and know a lot about me at this stage, I think you know how that went down. I, you know, I still remember that moment of, I just wasn't going to accept that. Like at the time I didn't say anything in there. Okay. She was actually a lovely woman so I just placated her and I can't even remember what I would have said but you know it was just look of pity of like you know I'm sorry now Mark it's time to settle you know, you're not gonna be able to do jiu-jitsu or maybe the gym to the level that you think you will anymore as I said time to take up swimming like you know in my head I'm like I'm 25 I'm not even in in my prime years of my life physically athletically and you're telling me to settle now to do what fucking take up water polo with the elderly and, and, and do chess in my spare time. Is that it? You, like, you know, this is how I was thinking back then. I was like, no, 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 this, this isn't going to be, be how my story is ending. So that was it, you know, fifth expert. And now what have I got? A fifth diagnosis, you know. And as we get to further down below in, in the main problems here, I got different diagnoses from all of them. Out of all the five experts I went to across physios, chiropractors, doctors, etc., none of them were the same. You know, so think, the penny was starting to drop here that maybe they don't actually know what they're talking about. You know, maybe these are just opinions. It's not the gospel truth and, and, and I don't have to settle for what they're telling me. So I still remember leaving that, um, that consultation and my, my girlfriend at the time would have known all about these chronic pains more than most people. You know, we won't go into too much details here, but as you'll know, if you've gone through chronic pains, it seeps into every area of your life. It starts with no, like sport, your sport being a bit more limited and then creeps into your everyday life. Then it can creep into 
romantic relationships and different things as well. You know, it starts affecting every area of your life. You know, you don't, you don't care about it until these things start happening to you and we start to lose it. Um, and she was expecting me to be very upset around this, but you know, I, just like I'm saying there, I was past that stage, you know, 10 years trying to, trying to look for the fix, trying to get over this and trust in the healthcare process, trust in all these experts that I'm going to, to fix me. And, and what do you get at the very end? We tried, Mark, that's it, time to settle, you know, take up swimming at 25. So, you know, that was the turning point for me. That, that, was, that was when I left, you know, I was like, this clearly isn't working. I've done it for 10 years. <laughs> if it was gonna work, it would've worked by now, you know? Um, and it was time to move on from that approach. So that, that was the start of the whole don't settle attitude for me. You know, I did have a chip on my shoulder. I'm like, fuck that, like, that's not it. That's not how my story is gonna end. I've seen it with so many different people, but I don't care, that's not gonna be me. And I didn't know anything about the body. I don't know any of the stuff that I knew now. I had no idea what I was going to do, but what did I have? I had my attitude. You know, I had that attitude of I'm not going to settle for this. And I'm just going to find a way out of it. Okay. Um, so like lead, leading into what's the main problems here? You know, we're going to go through this. We're going to go through the main problems that people have and how they end up in that situation like I was. And then we'll run through like what, what my advice is on overcoming this and I'm gonna list then three steps to regaining your physical freedom, okay? And as we go through all them, by the very end, you're gonna see the big picture that I eventually did once I was getting back my physical freedom. You're gonna see how what we're doing, completely backwards approach. Like this healthcare route of, oh yeah, come in, we'll diagnose you with something wrong with you and then we'll give you the fix. If that doesn't work, I don't know, move on to the next one. It's the completely wrong approach, okay? So, you know, what is the common advice then? Once you start to see, oh, my physical freedom is starting to be slowly taken away from me, I'm noticing I'm being held back in sport or in life, we start to follow the common advice. And what is that? It's usually foam rolling and stretching, or else, yeah, go to the physio, chiro, osteopath, doctor, physio, you know, just like I explained there, um, or else, you know, painkillers and things like that as well. That's the common approach. I still hear it every day, you know, from people messaging me, um, and just talking to people about it. None of those are going to work. Like, we won't go into them in too much d detail, but foam rolling and stretching. Foam rolling isn't scientifically backed at all. It's a piece of foam on, on, a, on a roll, <laughs> you know? Like, it's, it's just like me doing that. It's a, like a massage. So, that's only treating the symptoms, not the root cause. Like, it can help with a little bit of pain, yes. But it's not changing anything in your body. It's not, it's not going to change your mobility levels or your strength levels, your coordination. These things you need to work on. You know, it's like, it's like going to the gym for strength training and you think you're, you're gonna change your body if someone just came over and rubbed your biceps. You expect them to get bigger, you expect some change to happen. That's not how the human body works. <laughs> we need to stress our own body and train our own body to make the changes that we want. It's the same for strength training. It's the same for mobility, you know? Even just think of that. We understand how to get progress with strength training. You don't need to get a trainer, you need to be consistent, you know, two, three times a week for three, six, nine, 12 months, then I'll see some decent progress. Mobility, oh! Go to the chiropractor, cracky backy, your back pain will be gone, or you know, just fo r rub your arm, get a massage, or foam roll there, and that'll change things. How does that make any sense when you really think about it? Dive into the science behind it, and um, because there is no science behind it, it's not scientifically backed. So the foam roll and stretching did that for ten years too. Now I haven't foam rolled in five years, and I've got all the way to the level of the splits, which was told was impossible for me by that same physio. So that's not scientifically backed. The other ones, you know, looking for the fix. That can help in certain situations for certain things, but it's still not, tr not treating the root cause. It's not looking at the bigger picture, which you'll see as we go on through this. And then, yeah, obviously taking things like painkillers for, for chronic pain. <laughs> Literally treating the symptoms again, not root cause. How is that gonna be a good approach for the rest of your life? Okay, so moving on from that then, moving into my advice and what helped me. My advice that I was following back then and the advice I still give to people now when I get asked all these questions is follow the results. Okay, that's what I tell people, just like I've written down there um, in the newsletter, follow the results. Quick analogy here. If you wanted to get rich and you had two options, you could go to college and do a four-year course on how to get rich, taught to you by a college lecturer who's getting 60 grand a year and he doesn't have financial freedom. Or you could go to Bob down the road who has no formal education on this but he has a mansion, he's a Lambo and a Ferrari out the front and then he's three holiday homes spread throughout Europe. For most of my life, 25 years, all the way up to that, 
example of the physio that I told you, I was going to the first one. I was going to the educated experts on these things to try and improve them. Didn't work for me. For the last five years, what I'm doing now is I'm going to all the bobs I can find. You know, I'm going to, I'm following the results. I don't care who they are, what their education was, their background, whatever. I don't care. I'm going for the results, following the results, paying them to show me how to get there. And I've done that for mobility, strength training, mindset, life, business, for everything. And I've got more progress across everything. More progress the last five years than I have the previous 20 of my life, you know. So it, it took that moment for me of going to five different experts and them all giving me different diagnosis for the penny to drop and see that, yeah, it's, it's just their own opinions. You know, and, th- and that was the big realization for, that, for me that I took from it, which was like, nobody knows it all. Nobody knows it all. There are no real like experts in the sense that they know everything. All people can tell you, including me here today, is their opinion. And their opinion is based off two different things. They have their education and their experience. They combine those together and they give you their opinion. And that's all they can do. And that, that's why, you know, because as I thought about this, it started to make sense then. That's how I could go to five different experts in the healthcare industry and get five different diagnoses because some of them were educated as osteopaths or chiropractors or physio um, or doctors. They have different education and they all have different experiences as well. Different life experiences, different experiences working with different clients, etc. So that's how the, the opinions were different that were coming out the other end. So once I started looking at it like that, it made so much more sense that I was like, at the end of the day, it's all opinions. So I might as well go and get an opinion from someone who has what I, what I want. <laughs> because I think back again, I wanted my, my physical freedom. I want to be able to do whatever it is that I want with my body um, and, and get over these chronic pains. So, you know, the osteopath I was going to was overweight and probably couldn't touch his toes. You know, I, I think of some of the doctors I went to, by the way, they interact with me. I could assume they've never had chronic pains in their own life because they weren't very empathetic about it. Then, you know, the physio I went to, obviously mobility levels weren't very high either, telling me things like the splits were impossible for me. And, you know, I just think back, I'm like, I wasn't following the results. You know, I was just going to the educated people on it, but they didn't have the results that I wanted on themselves. And I didn't actually see any client examples either of going through the exact same thing. So it started to make a lot of sense for me. And I obviously wished I followed the results sooner, but you know, the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago, second best time is today. So that's just the attitude that I moved forward with. So that was on following the results. Yeah, and then there's one more example. That's what I was thinking of there. There's one thing I was missing. This is what really hit it home for me. You know, just from what I've told you there, all we can hear is opinions based on people's education experience. Cool, yeah, I'm gonna follow the results. What happened then? Ended up going to different coaches. You know, I've, I've had different coaches in person and online across mobility strength, all those things the last five, six years. But the first coach, mobility coach I went to, no formal education. They're not a physio. <laughs> they had a PT cert, which you can get online in about three months. And they had a mobility cert from a seminar that you can do in three days. Okay. So basically the qualification level that you could have in about four months time or anyone could have because it's all entry level. And he helped me in a couple of months more with my chronic back pain of 10 years than any of the experts combined together with all their doctorates and degrees. There we go. That, that was it shattered forever. Ever since then, for the rest of my life, this whole expert thing was shattered. How is that possible? That someone with no formal education can help me and my chronic pains, help me get my physical freedom back more than all the experts and all the money I've paid for these people, more than all of them combined. You know, that, that was really it for me. And that's what I'm trying to tell you because it's phrased like that as well, of follow the results. I'm not saying follow Joe. I'm not even saying necessarily follow Mark McCord. I'm saying follow the results. The results that you want, does the person have it? Does he have examples of bringing others through it? That's the easiest bullshit detector I could come up with. And that, that's what's what served me well. That's what I use going forward for the coaches that I've, I've had all the way up and the ones that I'm going to have in the future. Okay, so, so that was it from there. I started following the results. That started leading me to two results, believe it or not, um, on myself finally. And then looking back, I also realized that the attitude and approach has to be there. You know, quick analogy, the attitude is like the fuel of the car. The approach is like the GPS. 
you need both of them, okay? It, like, if we have a great attitude, you've loads of fuel, but you've no GPS, the car will just be driving all over the place, you'll never get where you want. If you have the opposite, if you have the good strategy, but not a good attitude, it's like you have the GPS, but you're gonna run out of fuel before you get there, okay? And, you know, I see that in so many different people, they're missing one or the other. For me personally, and probably the majority, I had the attitude, like I was saying, like I was trying, I wasn't giving up, I am consistent when I get a plan and I'll do everything that's there, but the strategy wasn't right. You know, this quick fix healthcare route, the stuff they were giving me wasn't the right stuff. So I had all the, the good attitude, I was driving all over the place, I was never getting where I wanted. That, that's, that was my experience for 10 years. So now that I finally followed the results, that was my GPS, now I'm following the results, now I had the, all the fuel, I had the GPS, now I finally started getting to where I wanted to go. Okay, so now going on from that, we're going to start diving into the three steps to regaining your physical freedom. When I look back over my own journey, these were the things I needed. Like every piece of content I put out there across Instagram, across YouTube, across everything in the newsletters, it's all aimed at the younger me. If, if I found Mark sitting on the seat outside um, the physio on that day, you know, if, if, if we figured out time travel, I'd go in and grab him and I'd tell him all the stuff from this video and it would change his life, you know. And I'd even go back, I'd get him way before that, I'd get him 10 years before that and not have him go through, you know, the 10 years of trying these quick fixes and, and not working and not understanding why and nearly settling and, and giving up on it, you know, I don't even, I honestly can't even comprehend what my life would be like, you know, that was where my mindset was, I was like, I, I can't imagine from 25 to 95 or however long I live, me not doing the things I want to do you wouldn't want to be around me. So, three steps to regaining the physical freedom. First one, lifestyle change, okay? Second one, perspective change. Third one, educational change, okay? So, they're the three steps we need. We need lifestyle change, perspective change, and educational change. Without these three, you're not gonna get your physical freedom back long-term, I can tell you that now. So, to dive into them, starting off with the lifestyle change. I'll throw in analogies here, these are, what's going to help you remember these going forward and it's one that I say to every client at the start of their journey or people on Instagram or people on the street you know um, chatting with friends and they're asking me about this here's the question if you had an option okay two things at 60 years old you could either have pearly white teeth but you lost your physical freedom okay maybe you're in a wheelchair can't do the things that you want to do but you have your pearly white teeth or you have your physical freedom but you're gummy Joe, you know, you lost your teeth and you've dentures now, okay? What would you pick? Everyone I've asked so far has said physical freedom. I'd rather have my physical freedom, yeah, dentures, whatever, don't really care too much about the teeth. I want my physical freedom to do what I, what, the stuff that I love and also to be able to play out my family, future kids, whatever. Cool, Th that's what I would pick. Then we go on from there. Great, that's what your words are telling me, but your priorities are not determined by your words, they're determined by your actions. So, you're brushing your teeth twice a day without fail. What are you doing for your body? They're not doing anything for their body. Hmm. Okay. So, they're not aligning, are they? You know, you, like, your intentions, the words you're using, they're not aligning with your actions. You're prioritizing your teeth, even though you're saying you care more about your body. You know, and this really starts to open people's eyes up to it. When it was said to me for the first time, it was a holy shit moment. And why wasn't this explained to me when I was younger? So that's what people need to hear. They need the lifestyle change. We need to, at the very least, give the body as much priority as the teeth. We need to switch from reactive to proactive, okay? Because if we run through the example, we'll compare it now, how we approach the body, how we approach the teeth. And like, this will be laughable, but it's what's needed to, to ingrain it in your brain. So if we treated the teeth with the same reactive approach we do with the body, it would be like never brushing my teeth, okay? so. Two years, five years, 10 years go by and I don't brush my teeth. Then lo and behold, they're starting to go a bit black. One or two of them have fallen out. Now I'm like, shit, this is affecting my life. I need to sort this out. So I start going to, I go to the dentist and I tell him, <laughs> not sure what's going on here. Maybe it's just something to do with my teeth, but you know, they're falling out. Something's wrong here. Can you fix them? What, what would the dentist say to you? You know, he'd, <laughs> he'd just look at you so confused. I'd be like, so you're, you're not doing anything for your teeth, you're not brushing your teeth at all. And you'd be like, no, why would I do that? What's that gonna do? You know, he'd be like, what the fuck do you expect is gonna happen? You know, what, like, what do you expect is gonna happen if you're not looking after your teeth? And 
that, that's what we do with the body, you know? We don't care about our body, and I'm not judging because this is exactly what I did. We don't care about our body, about our physical freedom. We're playing all the sports that we love. It's only then when things start to get really bad, it's not when we get the first two needles, we just push through them and play on. When things get really, really bad and we start to lose the physical freedom, that's when we start to go to people. Then we look for the fix. And then we're, you know, I thought, it was, is it my body? I don't know. I'm getting all these diagnoses. Maybe there's something wrong with my body. But as you're, as you're seeing now that you have the bigger picture, that's only a tiny, that's, you're missing the complete big picture here that it's the approach that's the problem. It's this reactive approach that's the problem. We're never going to get out of it otherwise. Because even... As you go further into that, let's say the fix, let's say there actually was a fix and there isn't. Let's say there was a fix and the dentist, you know, he fixes all your teeth and gives you pearly white teeth again. What's going to happen? Five, ten years time, you're going to be back in the exact same situation because you haven't learned anything. And, and you're going to not brush your teeth still and it's going to happen again. Same with the body, you know, even if in that session with the physio that I talked about, let's say somehow she clicked her fingers and all the 10 years of chronic pains and injuries and changes in my body were just reversed and I did the splits there on the floor and was doing backflips. I would have thought, this is it sorted. But what had happened? I haven't learned a thing. I, I don't understand how to look after my body. I don't understand the bigger picture. I go back to just doing what I did when I was younger and not look after my body two, three, four, five, ten 10 years again be back in the same situation. I'd have lost my physical freedom again. So you can see, first of all, there is no quick fix. Second of all, if there was a quick fix, it's not the answer anyway, because it's, it's not going to give you the long-term approach you need to keep your physical freedom. And obviously I get a bit amped up as I start talking about it, because from my 10 years of frustration, from all you guys out there not knowing this information either. You know, I'm just trying to spread this better information to keep people away from losing their physical freedom and push them back in the right direction and, and give them the tools to be able to manage this long term. So that's it. That's the lifestyle change that we need. And that's what I do with myself, with clients. They have a daily routine there that they're working on along with other stuff, obviously. But, but that's it. That's the bare minimum. If someone couldn't give their body five or ten minutes a day, that's it. There's nothing you can do. Like you're... When have you ever heard someone say, oh, you know, like... I've just been so busy there with the kids and the job and stuff that like I wasn't able to brush my teeth there the last the last month. That's why your breath is stinking. Like, do you know? Like, again, you might even laugh at that. that. That's what we're doing with the body. You know, you've told me before, you you'd rather have the the physical freedom than the teeth. But yet, oh, no matter what happens, we can brush our teeth for five minutes throughout the day. But yet, oh, can't find that time for the body. You see, so that's the first big pillar. That's the lifestyle change that we need. Second one, run through a little bit quicker, perspective change, okay? This is where we start to treat our body just like a relationship with another person, like a partner, okay? Another analogy here that really struck with me, it's like, take my example, 10 years of chronic pains and injuries, not looking after my body. That's like me going out with someone for 10 years, not listening to them. The signals that they're telling me, which would be the chronic pain, tightness, etc., I'm like, whatever. It's not that bad yet, I'll deal with it when it gets worse. You know, how is that relationship going to be? It's going to be shit. You're going to be getting shit from them all the time. And the line here of like, if you don't listen to your body when it whispers, you're going to have to put up with its scream. That's what happens. If you don't address the niggles, the tightness, the stiffness, you're going to end up in chronic pain like I was. You know, and at my worst points, couldn't iron more than two shirts without my back flaring up, couldn't sit in a two hour train, couldn't stand still for more than 20 minutes. You know, People like look at me now on Instagram doing the splits and different things. That was my ground zero. That was me five years ago. You know, I'm just trying to show people what's possible and that the starting points don't matter here. So that's it, you know, we need to start listening to the signals, interpreting them, start to delve in and understand what they mean so that we can actually work on this relationship. That's the perspective change. So we need to think of it like a relationship, just like you'd have with someone else. Like me, it, my body wanted to divorce me. You know, that's where I was, on the brink of divorce with my body, but now I've turned it around, start listening to my body, I start working on that relationship. Five years on now, and I'm back in the honeymoon phase. You know, I'm doing everything that I could do before and much more. And that's what I want for you, okay? Um, last point then. Fuck's sake. <clears throat> so that's the relationship. No, it's not. What is it? Perspective change. So that's the perspective change. We want to go from the brink of divorce with the body all the way back into the honeymoon phase. That's what I've done. 10 years ago, couldn't do anything. Lost the physical freedom. Now, 
working on that relationship, listening to my body, all the stuff you'll see in more detail on the newsletter, that's what's got me back into the honeymoon phase, doing everything I could before and much more. Last one then is gonna be the educational change, okay? So this is huge for anything, any sort of progress that you want, you need to understand what's actually happening, okay? Without that, it's just not gonna happen. It's like trying to drive a car, you don't even know what the pedals do, what the gear sticks do, you're not gonna get anywhere, okay? So on this, I'm gonna link some of the main topics in the newsletter and in the description here of the YouTube video. So the two main things that you need to understand, why are we getting tight and stiff and how to manage pain, okay? Because think about it, there are two massive things that we're trying to get over. Like when I was going to all these chiropractors, osteopaths, physios, I'm going because I'm tight and stiff and in pain and I don't know what's going on, you know? But like I think over my 10 years, I was never explained anything. I never knew what pain actually was, even though I'm in it for 10 years, and I didn't understand why I was getting stiff. And none of this information is made, put out in the mainstream. So, oh, better finish up now in a couple of minutes. Um, so that's what you need to know, okay? So I'll link them to separate ones, there'll be videos and articles on them as well. That's where you need to start, because without education, we're not gonna get anywhere, okay? Because the whole goal of this is empowerment. I'm trying to empower as much people as I can to understand how to get back their physical freedom long term, this has to include education. You know, the whole healthcare route is like they're just handing out fish to people, so they always have to come back and rely on them, whereas I'm trying to teach people how to fish. Like, the end goal is client comes to me for a certain amount of time, then after that, I don't want to see them again. They have their physical freedom. They know how to look after themselves now, and I think that's the way it should be. Okay, so that's pretty much everything covered there. If you want more detail on it, dive into the newsletter. It'll be put out in a lot more detail. So I'll wrap it up then. The road after the red pill, as I said on the newsletter, like, what do we do now? Now that you know more about it, there's freedom in this. Now you have freedom to make new choices. You have freedom to carve a new path for yourself now and actually work towards your physical freedom, okay? So it's, it's, it's up to you from here. You know, I'm trying to put as much passion, energy, everything into this to show you, like, there is a better way. And I'm trying, that's the whole reason I started sharing my story um, years ago, to try and show people you don't have to settle for that, that you're going to, you won't get what you deserve, you get what you settle for. I'm trying to push people now in the right direction. So like that was it, you can live by default or you can live by design going forward, start making better choices, okay? So for those who don't wanna settle, you'll see in the description there, I'll put some resources, I'll put the, the free articles on why we're getting tight and stiff, the pain. Um, obviously the coaching link is gonna be there as well. So I'm taking new clients in February, so not right now at the moment, but the link is there. You can fill out the coaching application form for the physical freedom program and put in the information there and I'll get back to you then to organize a free consultation call, see if we're a good fit to work together on this. And going forward then, I suppose people could be watching this video at any time, put the info into the link. Look, I'll get back to whoever fills out the form and we'll chat from there on it. Okay, so that's pretty much everything covered and um, we'll leave it there until the next one. So don't settle and chase the small gains toward your potential, physical freedom, lifestyle design, mental freedom, whatever it is, all the small gains add up over time.